For our next area of study in probability and statistics, we're going to learn how to analyze data. Now, when we're looking at analyzing data, we talk a lot about the measures of central tendency. These are mean, median, and mode. Each of these should be a review of concepts you've learned in the past, but let's go over them real quick, beginning with mean. Now, mean is an arithmetic average found by adding all values of a data set and dividing the, this sum by the number of terms. Normally when people talk about average, this is what they intend, but any of these values can be considered the average. Next, median. The median is the middle value when all data points are arranged from smallest to biggest. If there are two middle values, which will happen if you have an even number of data points, you find the mean of these two. Last comes mode. And mode is the most common data value in a set. There can be at most two modes. If you have one mode, you have a mode for the set. If you have two, it's called a bimodal unit. And anything after that, you have no mode. You don't want a million different data points, each of them unique, and say you have a million different mode values. So either you have one mode, two modes, or none. So at the bottom here, we have a data set. And what we're going to do is find the mean, median, and mode for each of them. So let's begin with mean. Mean, using our sigma notation that we have picked up in previous lessons, we are going to, just a moment while I get this, we are going to find the sum of all my x values and this data set, x equals this data set, and then we're going to divide it by the number of items. Learning a little bit of notation here. So adding these together gives us a total of 475. Counting the number of terms, we have seven of them. So 475 divided by seven gives us a mean value of 67.9, roughly. It's 67 and 6 sevenths but we'll go with 67.9. And that is mean. The normal signifier for mean is a Greek letter mu. Looks like a U with a tail on both ends. Median. In order to find the median, we're going to need to take these data points and put them in order. So doing that, we have 56, 59, 59, 65, 65, 73, 98. The middle value, since we have 7, 7 divided by 2 is 3 and a half. We add an extra half and that gives us number 4. So data points 1, 2, 3, and 4. Our median value is 65. Next, mode. Mode is the most common answer. Well, if we look here, we have two answers of 59, and we have two answers of 65. Everything else shows up only once. So this is a bimodal system, and we say the mode is 59 and 65. We do not pick one or the other. We do not find their mean. We simply have two of them. Now, looking at this data set, we do have one other concept available here, and that is the concept of the outlier. An outlier is a data point that is considerably different from all the others. In this case, the number 98 sits apart from everything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate 98 and we're going to go through and recalculate our mean, median, and mode without this outlier. Our new mean, mu, is equal to the sum of our data divided by the number of terms. Well, if we take our 475 and take off that 98, it's going to lower the value by almost 100 and we get 377. Now we have only six numbers in our data set. So 377 divided by 6 will give us 62.8 roughly. So you can see it made a drastic change in our mean value. Median is going to be the middle number. 
Well, now that we have only six data points, six divided by two is three. Add an extra half, it's three and a half, so our, it's going to fall between these two, 59 and 65. When we have two means, sorry, when we have two medians, we find their average. And if we average those two numbers together, 59 and 65, we will come out with 62. Mode will not change. If we get rid of an outlier, it is one unique point that's different than everything else, so our mode will stay the same, 59 and 65. You can see getting rid of the outlier lowered our mean and lowered our median because it was a high outlier. If it was a low outlier, then it would raise those two items, but the one that changed the most was the mean, and that's common. So once we have the idea of what the central tendency is, mean, median, and mode, we can use this to help compare data from different sources. So comparing data sets, 11 students' tests were selected from two different classes and their scores were analyzed. What we're going to do is build a box and whisker plot for the data. Now box and whisker plot again should be a review item, but let's take a look at it just as part of a review. For box and whisker, it's going to have a low value, a lower half, a halfway, an upper half, and a high value so that it looks something like this. Now the low dot is your smallest number. Both these data sets are placed in order from smallest to biggest. So for our first classroom set, we have our minimum is 75 and our maximum is 100. Next, we need to find the center point here, and that is the median. So we have 11 data points in each classroom. Half of 11 is 5.5. We add an extra value that gives us 6. So our sixth data point, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, it's the second number of 82. So here is median. When we do this, we have split our data into two different parts. We have five items below the median, and we have five above. To find these other two uprights in our box and whisker, we need to find the median of the lower half, that's called the first quartile, and the median of the upper half, that is the third quartile. The median acts of the entire set acts as the second quartile. So the median of this lower half is right here at 79, so I will put a Q1 for first quartile. The median of the upper half is going to be data point 90, so that is Q3. So going through and putting this information on, at 75 I will have a dot, at 79 roughly I will have a vertical line, 82, I will have another vertical line for my median, 90, I will have a vertical line for my third quartile, and 100, I will have a dot, then I connect the items. Now each section of this box and whisker represents 25% of the data. If a section is small, it means that 25% of data is really close together. If it's spread out, there's still the same number of items in there, just they are that. They're more spread out. Now let's do the same items for the second data set. Again, we have the minimum at 70 and the maximum at 100. So I'll even put those dots on my graph as I go. Our median will be, again, the sixth item. They're going to fall directly underneath where they were before, so median is 85 this time. Our first quartile is going to be the middle of the lower half. That's 81. And our third quartile is going to be the middle of the upper half, which is 95. Now connecting these items gives us this box and whisker. You can see, looking at these two classrooms, both had the same maximum score. 
second class had a smaller, a lower minimum score, but the data tends to lean towards the fact that the first class scored more closely together based on the fact that this quartile here is very small and this quartile here is very small. These two sections, the upper inner quartile and the upper stem, are about the same size on both of them, but we have this quartile is much smaller and this is much smaller. So the fact that we have a smaller sections in our first data set says that the class scored more closely together. The fact that in the second data set we have the median higher shows that the class had a higher overall understanding of the material and we're able to show that. So taking this data and being able to analyze it when we're doing box and whiskers we look at quartiles or fourths. Something else that's used often in statistics is the concept of the percentile. So we're going to look at that. Now percent is so percentile is a number between 0 and 100 associated with a value set from a value x from a data set that tells its relative position. What this means is that in a class or in a school you might take a test and rank number 10 out of 12 in that class, but how do you compare it to everybody nationwide? This would give you a percentile overall. So what you do is you take the number, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at percentile, I'm going to give it a variable p. The way we find our percentiles, we take the number of items and we multiply it by the percentile that we're looking for. This tells us the position in the list that we wanted to know. And with your percentiles, when you go to find a position, you always round up. So I have here a hypothetical set of data from midterm exams of a Spanish class of 20 students. We want to find the 60th and the 35th percentiles. So what I'm going to do, there are 20 data points, so I'm taking 20. I'm going to multiply it by the 60th percentile, which is... 0 and 6 tenths. Now when we multiply those we get the number 12 which means that the 12th item 7 in the first row, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 number 80 falls under that uh, 60th percentile. Next what would it be for a 35th percentile? So I'm going to take the 20 items and multiply it by 0.35 and 20 times 0.35 gives us number 7. So that means the score of 74 ranks as the 35th percentile. So if this was a national test, 35% of the students would do worse on that and everybody else would do better. So this is how percentiles work. We're breaking things down as if there were 100, no matter how many there are. And with quartiles, we're breaking into fourths. This is how we go through and analyze data. We take information and set it out as if we were behaving as if this was a small section out of everybody in the world or everybody that we're comparing to. And then we go through and we say, are we doing better? Are we doing worse? Where can we improve? So use this information. We'll be able to apply it moving forward into a lot of areas but make sure you have these concepts down.